I got to tell you guys, I watched a couple of episodes last night. I was falling about it. The, the collision of yuppies with hipsters in, in a <laughs> tiny, tiny town is, is just a delight. Uh, um, this notion of setting up a scene, you know, a play, uh, like a sandbox, really, in which you can play, right. has been done on TV a number of times. Portlandia, for example. Right. Right? There's Royston Vasey from the League of Gentlemen series. There's Little Britain. Uh, how did you come about deciding to create Sunnyside and who did you want to populate it with right at the start? Well, the idea was to, to, to specifically do a neighborhood. We were really looking at the Parkdale area of Toronto and that was it. And, uh, uh, so that's what we wanted to do. And we wanted to, we wanted to, to tie show, tie sketches together geographically in a way that, you know, it hasn't been done a lot. A show like Portlandia is everybody's actually tied together by attitude, you know, and 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 it's just it's this, uh, and there's and we have some of that element in there. That's one of the things that exists. But we wanted to look at at an area in tra- transition that had just a wide range of characters. Well, the show has been described, Kathleen, as an absurdist take on a neighborhood in transition. Can you say what that means exactly to you? Uh, well, I think I think there's a lot of recognizable things in the neighborhood for anybody who lives kind of in a, you know, in an urban setting. Uh, but everything's a little exploded. And um, there's a lot of things that just, uh, you just have to kind of take for granted in, in Sunnyside. Like Such as? Uh, uh, the, the hole is a as a thing. <laughs> the hole. Yes. Tell us about the hole. <laughs> well, I think this idea originally came from Kathleen. I think it's one of your ideas, but it was just that there, that there's no internet in Sunnyside. And, uh, if you have a question, you have to ask the hole. And it's just, it's just a, a manhole in the ground with the, with the voice of Norm Macdonald that, uh, answers your question, sometimes not satisfactorily. Not very generously. No, no, no. You get one question. That's it. Do I get one question? <laughs> yes. Move on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we, we we had a lot of fun with that, and we're and we're, we're keeping that going. And and it was like a weird idea that somehow we said this we can't do this. They'll say no to this. We kept on, that. That was how the show oh, went yeah. on. We thought we thought the same thing about the about the ponies too. Yeah. Well, yes, you have themes in each episode, don't you? One of them is ponies, where mysteriously the whole town is suddenly infested with feral. Tiny, tiny little feral, feral ponies. ponies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which turn up as uh, hot ponies, you might say, i.e. hot dogs, no? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So why? I mean, how, again, when, as comedy writers, you're sitting down. Is, is it that it gives you that sandbox, a certain set of parameters and a theme to milk? I and mean, how you know why? Why do you decide to? In another one, there's the top hat. It's another right. One, you know. Yeah. The, 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 there's mysteriously a magical top hat that doesn't. You know, the fact that there's magic doesn't really always work out that, that well for everyone, anyway. But uh, the idea of of having a world that's fanciful and full of fancy and has a bit of that wish fulfillment in it, at it sort of takes. Uh, it, it's the it's the sweet in a way that goes along with the the the, the tart because we also want to show what the world's really like. So I think we, we we felt we needed to to balance those two things in order to make it feel to have the kind of fun that we're having with these fairly dark topics sometimes. Yeah, fairly dark. I, I was going to say not unlike the terrible top hat, which really uh, only leads to bad news. <laughs> uh, the alternate reality sh- store where right, people right. can go and they've got a problem on their mind and it can be instantly solved, but at a terrible cost. It's it's Mephistophelian, isn't it? It really is like the Faustian bargain every time. Absolutely, yeah. We're, we've and we've had, but we've we've gone in odd directions with it as well and some few because we're writing more episodes now so we're again we're thinking we really liked our alternate reality store and we can't just do a simple reversal every time so we're trying to find oh changes I, on that as well i like the re- the, the reversal <laughs> it's, it's just because you'd have this terrible sense of dread you know oh no how are you going to be tortured uh, but who came up then with because it there's there's more um uh Mephistopheles, or have you pronounced his name? <laughs> uh, 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 Shaitan in the Dark Roast Cafe is another character. Who, who came up with him? I think that was uh, the, the other co-creator, uh, Gary Pearson. Gary I think Pearson. that was his character. Why, um, do, you, do you hate it? Because I'll tell Gary you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love the satanic <laughs> undercurrent no, of, this, of this sunny town. It's like, it's like a David Lynch movie, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. and there's this this odd thing of is he or is he not Satan? He does. He's not a very successful Satan, <laughs> but he certainly never really doubts that he's Satan, even when it's sort of thrown in his face. He can call up thunder. Yes, apparently, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more than that. I mean, it, there's the bleeding wall. Who came up with the bleeding wall, and what the hell is that about? Is it a portal into hell? That, again, is uh, from, from the, the mind of <laughs> Kathleen. Tell I us. Just, I just, I don't know. It's, it's like a lot of other things on, on Sunnyside. It's just a problem <laughs> that, 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 I don't know, that you, have to, that you have to deal with. But it's another one of those things that... Um, I, I don't like like the hole or like the like the ponies. You just you, well, the thing about the bleeding wall yeah. is great. Is you're dealing with a relationship that's falling apart, and it's kind of heavy. And even if you're getting jokes in at it, there's going to be a heaviness to it. You, well, so, to, to explain to, to listeners, there's a, a couple in bed who are constantly unhappy, or at least he is. Uh, and one of the excuses, the uh, "Not tonight, dear. I have a headache." Excuses is <laughs> the. the Bleeding wall distracts me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 just one of those. It's a manifestation of of the problem that's right there in the room. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, you, you know, uh, Kathleen, I find it interesting that, forgive me, but it's like you're struggling a little to explain the creative process. Do you know, or or, or at least to explain these characters where they came from. I, 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 I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, so what is that magic? And do, do they come to you these? insane characters and concepts alone or in, uh, when you're shooting the breeze uh, around a table at your office well it's a it's a little it's a little of both but certainly once everything comes together a lot a lot of what what makes a character is when you put on a wig and you have a costume and there I wear a lot of wigs in the show um, but it's 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 you know it's the setting and all of uh, and the costuming and and all of the elements coming together that sort of you know that that really inform me how to how to how to play a character. Uh, I'll, uh, my wife uh, works at Comedy Central, uh, in, um, and uh, she always tells me, you know, the funny business is a really serious one. Right, right, right. In fact, it could be downright depressing <laughs> uh, if things aren't funny. You know? Exactly, exactly. Do you guys often have conflicts? Do you fight over what's funny or not? Do you storm out of the room in a funk? No, I've, I, I certainly have worked with people in my past who've done that, who, 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 who take their, their funny angrily. Uh, we're, we're not really that, that group of people. We, yeah. we put stuff forward. We're all kind of happy if someone likes it. We're all kind of you know, ready for, for more rejection than we tend to get. Uh, I guess so, you can't have a, a thin skin, can you? Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, absolutely. They're, they're, and, and, you know, it happens all the time where you write something that's just making you giggle as you type it, and it just sits there. Uh -huh. And you go, really? Oh, okay. Uh, but they're, <laughs> it's, you know, because well, all, all of us have performed in front of our audiences, and the audience is right. So if you go up and do something hilarious, and the audience doesn't laugh, well, it wasn't hilarious. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> and uh, the... Well, how did you decide to skewer uh, yuppies? And do you feel like I, I have almost nothing bad to say about Sunny I Absolutely love it. Oh, thank Except you. for maybe you don't skewer the yuppies quite viciously enough. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we're maybe we're a bit yuppies. <laughs> <laughs> Leave the poor people be. <laughs> yeah. They're just enjoying their coffee. They've just got good taste. I mean, jeez. Uh, w w Kathleen, you, in the in the show, you play everything from a cat obsessed tweeter, Molly loves cats twenty two, is that her handle, uh, to a meth addict, uh, to a yummy mummy who lets her baby join <laughs> an infantile fight club. Uh, I wrote down the 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 dialogue from that. One parent says, "My baby can eat your baby's brains," and the other parent <laughs> says, "Oh, bum butter, I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> We're really hoping bum butter catches. Oh on. yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, so playing multiple characters is nothing new to you, of course, because of uh, previous experience in uh, this hour's twenty-two minutes and so on. Uh, how do you do? Do you uh, juggle them in your mind? Do you do you wake up sometimes as one character or another, or is it just like you said before, and you put on your wig? Uh, it, you know, it's kind of just a, it's just the the preparation of of getting ready before the scene, reading it over, putting on the wig, sitting in the makeup chair. Uh, but uh, I love being able to play so many characters yeah. in one show because I don't know, I get to use I get to use all my actorly muscles. <laughs> 
it, it's a funny conceit also that, that this town is unplugged, really, as you right, said. There's right. no internet, you know. And yet uh, there is a, almost an infernal uh, uh, smartphone, or at least the oh. user of it. Is, 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 <laughs> she's, she's the maniac, the stalker we all fear. Right, right, right. Uh, there's a bit of a contra technical contradiction there. How can there be smartphones but no internet? Well, here, here's the interesting thing. I have no idea. <laughs> no, we're, we're, because really we're, we're, we're writing a bunch of stuff as we're going. Uh, but you're absolutely right. There's, 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 there's the whole thing just is just full of holes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is this uh, for, for PRI listeners? Is this seen in the United States or will it be? Uh, abs absolutely. If they start a letter writing campaign yeah. to somebody or other, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we, we we hope so, but uh, yeah. not yet. Yeah. I, that just occurred to me. I, I thought I had to ask. Well, we've but, only done six episodes, and uh, and we're going to be doing seven more. We're soon. writing seven more now. Uh, so, uh, and I'm not sure if that's a critical mass in order to make a big <laughs> sale. <laughs> Uh, okay, that was just a little sidebar because it just occurred to me. I didn't want to forget to ask on on behalf of listeners. But can I go back to the the technical thing, the internet thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, what would happen to all of us? Do you think if suddenly the internet went down? I just think people would breathe a sigh of relief. I think people would be would flip out for a little while. And it's like when a blackout happens and you go out of your house and you walk around and you see other people on the street. It's just it's kind of wonderful. But then the blackout ends and you go back inside, yeah. you know? Yeah, it is liberating, isn't it? And then you start itching a little bit, wondering what you're missing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Dan, as, as someone making a traditional TV series, as Sunnyside is, that people can watch on an actual television screen, <laughs> uh, uh, do you worry about competing with web series and YouTube stars and viral videos and all of that? Do you have to, you know, what, how, do you, how do you compete? Well, that's... That is a worry, but I don't even know how to begin to worry about it. Mm. Like it's you know, the world is changing all around us. Now the the show's also available online, which you know, which is nice, and that's probably it's. Uh, here's what I think: I think that we're, we're, our job is to to make creative, uh, humorous stuff that 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 will, people will, will enjoy, and if they enjoy it enough, we'll we'll have a job, and when they stop enjoying it, we won't have a job. But our job really isn't to 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 drive the next format. So the the, the technology that's changing is just a problem of the del delivery system, and I choose not to worry about that and be at the you know I I, I guess the the we, the show could be on Netflix or the show could be on a, a different delivery system, but that's sort of not our issue. As far as content is concerned, a lot of debate these days about what should and shouldn't be off limits for comedians. You know, the Charlie Hebdo thing sobered mm -hmm. people up a yeah, hell of yeah. a lot. Uh, then, you know, rape jokes and mocking Bill Cosby and so on. Right. Uh, do you have uh, sort of automatic inner sensors? How do you deal with that atmosphere of welfare? Well, I th I, it's, it's, it's sort of... Uh, in the way the the way we write and the way when, when you talk when you talk about how we you know what, what is the idea or what's what's the overriding idea we're we we're a little we don't want to analyze things too much in terms of how, where the comedy comes from and so also sometimes we say yeah we're not going to do that but we don't tear it apart as to why we don't want to do it so there we definitely have limits but I don't think we, there's nothing pinned on the wall. When you speaking of the wall, when you worked on uh, the kids in the hall, uh, right. you were frequently censored for distribution in the U.S., weren't you? Uh, yeah, there, that's it, it. Certainly happened. You, you could get away with things here. It was often just uh, well, there was a breakthrough when there was a comedy show where they mentioned AIDS. Uh, uh, when, um, that was actually said on on air. It was a big fight, and 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 it was won, and it got in here, and it was a bigger issue there, and and just the, that just. The idea that well, this is comedy. We can't we can't do this, and we could maybe perhaps say that in a drama show. We can't say it in a comedy. So there's those sort of things that come up. Yeah, Kathleen, how about you? Where do you draw a line? Do you have an inner censor? Uh, well, you know, I mean, there are certain things that we uh, we just we just can't say because we're we you know we're on at eight o'clock on a. Thursday night and you know we, we'd like to we'd like to keep writing the show <laughs> but in terms of myself and my own comedy I think you know you should really be able to say anything you you want as long as you can stand behind it and be accountable in an ideal world 
Uh, such as Sunnyside. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you both for uh, telling us about this program, which I, I absolutely loved. I think. Well, thanks, oh, so thanks much. a lot.